The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Denninger with Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and I'm here with Jack DeGraw, and we are talking Yankees baseball. How are you doing, Jack? Good. How are you today, Robert? Nah, not too bad. Uh, we got nine games in the book so far in the season, and the uh, Yankees are four and five to start the year. Yeah, it was nice they got a win today because uh, they always have trouble down here in Tampa, and uh, it was nice they were able to – you know, scrape out a win today. Yeah, they they salvaged uh, one game out of the series, which I mean, they they uh their bats look dead this series. Um, but it was nice to see them, you know, put together a little rally in the top of the tenth and and come away with the victory today. Yeah, it looked like you know they 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 leave men on base all the time, and 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 Odar, the new guy they got from the Rangers, he come up with a big hit and with two outs and. Uh, you know, that was nice to see because the Yankees haven't been getting too many two, uh, clutch hits this season. Yeah, he he had the go-ahead single, and then Sanchez followed with another RBI single, and Urshela drove in two runs, and I think they did it with all, all the two outs, I think, to the top of the 10th. Yeah, they, they haven't had too many two-out hits, and uh, that, that was nice to see. Yeah, because uh, going into that 10th inning, I think they were one for 10 with runners in scoring position, so... Uh, it was nice to see them get some clutch hits. <laughs> yeah, it, it's always all or nothing. You know, either they hit home runs and or, or they don't score many. Yeah. I mean, and uh, today they used the word benched with Clint Frazier, and it just uh, kind of shocked me a little bit because he's only played seven games, and, Boone tried spinning it that he likes for, uh, Gardner's. Uh, he likes the matchup with Gardner against the Rays, plus his defense at Tropicana. And I just, you know, he said he touched base with Frazier, and Frazier's upset, and he has every right to be. It's just, I think if Frazier's not in that lineup tomorrow, it's going to be uh, quite telling on what they think of Clint Frazier. Well, I mean, Robert, this has been going on for what? What what did you say? Two, since 2017? It's just yeah. like the, the spin the Yankees give, how much they love Frazier's bat and all this. But it, it just doesn't – they don't give him a chance to play. No. And I mean – really... I get, Sorry, go ahead, Robert. Oh, no, I was just going to – I was going to say, and when he came up in 2017 – he um he played in I think thirty nine games, got one hundred and forty two at bats, and he had four homers, nine doubles, four triples. You know he he drove in runs, and he showed you what he was capable of that that uh, first season with the Yankees. And since then, every time he comes up and fills in for, for for players, he 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 does very well. He's been their offensive player of the week a couple times. He's had a couple of walk offs. I mean, he's shown that he can he can not only play but be productive at this level. And when they finally named him the starting left fielder, I, I, you know, I was happy for him. But then when I heard they re-signed Brett Gardner, I just had that feeling that, you know, the first chance, you know, Booney gets, he was going to start slipping Gardner more and more in that lineup. I just didn't think it would be this quick. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, I think Frazier could give you 25, 30 homers, 100 RBIs. I mean, Brett Gardner's a good player. The Yankees love Brett Gardner. The fans like him, and he, he's been a good player for the Yankees. But he's yeah. never been a great player. I mean, he's 259 no. career. He does an excellent job uh, defensively. He gets on base. He works the count. But he's never been a great player. No. And I think no. Frazier, with his bat speed, has the potential to be something special but it's just going the way sitting on the bench and going up and down in triple a. I mean, it gets frustrating. Yeah. And like last year going into the playoffs, Frazier was, was hitting the ball extremely well. And then all of a sudden Brett Gardner was the starter going into the postseason, And, uh, it just seems like they, they keep toying with them a little bit. Yeah. I mean, if they want to put Gardner in center, and put Frazier in left. I mean, Hicks is, is not doing anything offensively. 
I mean, granted, it's early, but he hasn't done much yeah. anything. Yeah, Hicks is only batting uh, 129 so far in the season. You think he's only got uh, three hits? Yeah, he's uh, four hits, but he, he struck out he struck out 11 times. Uh, like today, he had the bases loaded, nobody out, and he grounds into a double play. And, you know, one of the reasons they like Hicks in the third spot is because he draws walks and he, he – ground he, he doesn't ground into that many double plays but so far he, he's you know he's a career 234 hitter and he's your your, your number three hitter and uh he just he, he looks the worst out of all of them right now and it's just surprising that they're, they're benching frazier when hicks is the one that's struggling the most yeah i mean i i think you know the yankees are just not that high on clint frazier I mean, we don't yeah. know what goes behind the scenes, but you know they do the same thing with Andujar, and but Frazier, Andujar, they just don't seem to be uh, too high on him. And uh, you know the question is why, especially with Frazier. You know, give the kid a chance, give him five hundred at bats. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, you know, because like the, the little sample sizes we've gotten so far. I mean, from what I've seen, the kid so far, he, he he's shown he can play at this level and then he can be productive. So I don't, yeah, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but you, you'd think they'd want to get a look at him, a good look at him this year. Yeah, hopefully, uh, I, I, I think you know if we see him in the lineup in the upcoming Toronto series, that might tell the tale. If we don't see him, it might be another you know up and down season. Yeah, and uh, the Yankees uh, sent Domingo Herman to the alternate site and. They, they they said they're gonna they plan to bring him back when they go back to needing a fifth starter, but uh, it appears they're gonna skip two of his starts. They got eight games in ten days, and they're gonna go with the four man rotation during those those eight games. Yeah, Herman just has some trouble. I mean, he's got strikeout stuff. He's got great stuff, but he you know he he leaves the ball over the plate sometimes. He gets beat by home runs. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm sure when the, as the season goes on, he's gonna play a big part because the Yankees are going to need at least eight or nine starting pitchers because, uh, you know, the, the starting staff after Cole is a, a big a big question mark with injuries and everything. And, uh, you know, the guys just haven't pitched much the last two years. Yeah, yeah. You know, Herman, Kluber, and that, and that other guy, uh, Tal- Talian, I keep getting his name wrong, but, yeah, those guys really haven't pitched in, you know, the last couple of years. So those are three huge question marks this season. So, yeah, they're going to need all the pitching they can get. Yeah, and Montgomery hasn't, you know, he he pitched last year, but uh, you know he don't have a lot of innings in the last few years. I mean, they only played X amount of sixty games last year, so even the guys who pitched last year didn't get a lot of a lot of work. Yeah, he he had a <clears throat> Montgomery had a great first start. I think he pitched uh, six shutout innings, and today he uh, he had a rough inning, rough inning and a half, but otherwise he he looked good. He just got hurt with the two home runs that he gave up. But otherwise, he, he, he's, looked, he's looked good in his first two starts. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it's good, good to have an arm like that in the lineup because, you know, he can he throws off speed. And he's really a, a good pitcher. He's got good control, and he can move the ball around. And uh, if he can stay healthy, I think he can win uh, in double figures uh, consistently. Yeah, and uh, Michael King had a great outing. I think he pitched something like six shutout innings in relief. I mean, he was he was brilliant in that 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 game. I think it was last week. Yeah, I think he retired uh, sixteen guys in a row. Yeah, so that, yeah. that, that that's uh, that's encouraging because the Yankees are very high on that kid. I think we might see him start or Garcia uh, sometime in the next week or so. Yeah, and and Jonathan the Wise is another guy out of the out of the pen that could start too if you needed him. I mean, he's looked great so far this year too. Yeah, I, I think the guys we see in the starting lineup, starting pitchers now, is going to be a little different when we get to July and August. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, a long season, but it's just I'm still I'm still shocked over Frazier because I've been high on Frazier and Andahar and. I had, a, you know, Andahar. I have accepted he, he. We're not going to see him in the Yankees uniform that much, and I was just hoping Frazier would get an opportunity this year. Yeah, same here, Robert. I was hoping to see him get 500 at bats, but 
you know, I, I think we'll know uh, we'll, we'll know shortly what the, the plans are for him. Yeah, and uh, so far Gary Sanchez he, he's uh, he's looked pretty good so far at the plate. You know, he hasn't looked horrible, which is which is the main thing. He's, he's looked he's looked good. Yeah, I mean, he, he seems like you know uh, he don't seem to be home run happy now. He's uh, you know he he you know takes some singles and, and stuff like that. He don't always seem to be swinging from his ass trying to hit home runs, and uh, you know there's some concern. You know, with the, he's had a couple throwing errors, and he, he didn't hustle on a play the other night. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, I, I think the Yankees are just going to stick with him this year, and then uh, you know, th- then we'll see what happens next. Yeah, he almost got thrown out at second on a single to right field. He was on first, and I think someone singled, and he barely made it to second base. And then there was a play where he thought he hit a home run. And it wound up hitting the wall, and he he got a long single out of it. But I think he would have been thrown at it second if he tried to run anyway. Yeah, I mean, sometimes he just seems to be, uh, you know, the mind <laughs> just seems to be elsewhere. But, uh, you know, the, like offensively, as we keep saying, I mean, he can give you things a lot of catchers can't. And, uh, yeah. you know, if everybody else does their job in the lineup, uh, you know, some of his faults he can overlook. Yeah, and uh, that guy Odor, who they got from the Rangers, um, I think until Voigt gets back, I think you got to play him at second and LeMayu at first because Bruce has been somewhat of a liability defensively at first base. Yeah, well, he don't have a, a lot of experience there. I mean, I I think Bruce is just, uh, you know, I, I think when they get uh, Voigt back, I mean, the Yankees will release the uh, Bruce, and he'll get picked up by some other team. Yeah, the Yankees, they had to make room for uh, Odor, and they had to um, designate, uh, what was his name, Estrada, and the uh, Yankees traded him today to the San Francisco Giants for cash consider- consideration. Well, that's good for Estrada. He'll get a chance to yeah. play out there and uh, – you know, a lot of these guys, they get in the Yankee organization, and then it's just going to be they're, they up, they're up and down. They're not really going to get a full shot. So it's good when they get traded because now they can find out, the, you know, what they can do. Yeah. You know, I keep having to remind myself, you know, we're playing 162 games this year, you know, not 60. But uh, it just seems like it's the same offense that we've seen for the last, you know, two, three years. It's just you're going to have, you know, they're going to have, they're going to win their games this this, this season. They'll, they'll win their a lot of games, but I'm still concerned going to the postseason. You know, granted we make it, which I think we will. It just, it's a, uh, it's not one of those grind them out lineups that you know that we saw in the '90s. This is a, you know, all or nothing type of players. Yeah, I mean the offense has been pretty much the same for like 15, yeah. 20 years. I mean. And, and it gets frustrating. I mean, today they left 20 men on base. Yeah, that's, what, that's too many. And, and, yeah, and, and that happens a lot. I mean, they're spoiled the Yan- as Yankee fans because they always have a good team and they're always going to win a lot of games. But, uh, you know, it, in a lot of ways, Robert, I mean, I don't think this team is as good as it was a couple years ago. No. I mean, I mean – uh, Girardi ahead, took him to yeah Girardi in twenty uh twenty seventeen took him to Game Seven of the American League Championship Series, and you know they didn't have the talent they have now, and I think they were a better team then than they are now. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, this is coming up. You, they they've been good enough to win the series, you know, the last four years. I mean, the Red Sox had some excellent teams, and and so did the Astros, but you know they got to the sixth or seventh game. So it's a couple clutch hits here and there. You, yeah. know, you would think by this time they would at least have a World Series appearance. Yeah, and the thing about Girardi was, like we were talking up there, he, I, he was someone who embraced analytics, but he didn't live and die by it. You know, And I think in the postseason, you can't go by what you did in the regular season because it's, it's a whole different animal, and sometimes you got to go with your gut or what you think is right. And it, it just seems like it's not something the Yankees have been willing to do the last several years. No, I mean, Boone is like, you know, it's 
he'll go by the what what the people upstairs say. And yeah. you're already within the game a long time. I think the play the older players who are, you know, uh in their mid fifties and stuff who played the game a different way when you didn't have the analytics. I mean, Girardi was a grinder. I mean, he was an yeah. outstanding catcher because he worked so hard at it and he, he was a battler and, you know, he brought some fire to the team and Boone just, you know, as you were saying, we're off air, Robert, he just sits in the dugout and there doesn't seem to be a lot of passion with the Yankees. I'm sure there is, but, yeah. but they just don't seem to have the, you know, the, the passion. No, and that that's a, the style difference between Girardi and Boone. I, I'm, Girardi would hold his uh, players' feet to the fire, and, you know, he would call someone out if they weren't doing their job like he did with Gary Sanchez, which the front office did not like at all. But, you know, he pushed his players, and you, you would see, the, you know, how they played. They, they they went out there trying, and it just seems like every year under Boone, they get less and less driven. They just seem less driven than they did the year before less enthusiasm it's almost like you know with Boone everything's fine everything's great you don't have to worry about anything and it just seems like there's no uh toughness or or emotion to the Yankees when they when they play now yeah I mean uh granted it's early but uh yeah yeah just don't seem to be uh you know maybe when they get more fans in the stands and and the weather warms up and uh you know but Right now, there's just it's even even down here in spring training, Robert. I mean, everything is just blah. I mean, the way <laughs> you go to the games and you watch the games on TV, there's hardly any fans. It's just like it's, you know, it's like uh, walking zombies. That's what, <laughs> that's what it seems like. Yeah, and I want to just go back to Frazier real quick. Uh, last year, towards the end of the year, like I said, he was hitting the ball very well, and you thought, okay, you know, it was a deci- decision. Is you going to play Gardner or Frazier in the postseason? They went with Gardner in that wild card game against Cleveland, and then in the first game against Tampa, Frazier got the start, and he goes two for four with a home run and a single, and then he doesn't get another start after that. And I think he got maybe one or two at-bats late in the game in that series, but he had a great game one. And they stick with Gardner when you have a guy like Frazier who's shown you last year and the year before that he could be productive if you put him in the lineup. And it just it burn it just gets me uh it just burns me that you know they're gonna get Gardner in there as you know as often as they, as they can this year. Yeah, it just seems like you know he he's he's a Yankee favorite, and uh, you know he when when push comes to shove, he's gonna be in the lineup. Yeah, yeah, it appears that way. I mean, <laughs> just it just gets to me. Yeah, yeah, it it is frustrating because you you like to see some, uh, you know, young blood in there and see what they can do. Yeah. And I mean, they kept raving about Frazier, and and now it's like you know he's he he goes back to AAA, and then he's on the bench, and it's like, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say yeah. anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Frazier has uh, almost 500. He's one bat short of 550 at bats with the Yankees, and he's got 24 home runs, 82 RBIs. Um, he's, he's got an on base percentage of 330. I mean, you put that together, that's a decent year, a full season of 550 at bats, 24 homers, 82 RBIs. Yeah, especially for a kid his age. I mean, he he's not even in his peak years yet. No. And if no. he's given off the team the last three years, I mean, uh, you know, who, who knows what those stats would be. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he batted 267 in 2019, and he batted 267 last year. You know, I mean, he's shown you that in limited time that he can play and be productive. I just... I just hope, you know, they, they do get him a, a legitimate shot this year. You know, see if you can get Gardner 300 bats by spreading him around, but try not to take it from the young kid. No. they, You know, if anybody should be sat, sat down every once in a while, it's Hicks. Yeah. You know, let, let Gardner play center, or even you could put Talkman out there. I mean, I, I like Talkman. Yes, yeah, so I he can he 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 actually bunted today, which is something you hardly ever see the Yankees do. Yeah. And uh, 
he can play all three outfield positions. I mean, uh, he he's a good guy to have on your team. Yeah, I mean, the shift they play on Jay Bruce, I mean, there is no one even close to the left side of the infield. You just thank God if he just gives it a, a nice little push towards the third base. Uh, Bruce could have a, a bunt single every time he comes up to bat. Yeah, I, you know, the, these guys are so used to swing, swinging uh, for the fences, and this is what, you know, kept him in the major leagues and made him successful in the major, major leagues. And, you know, it, it's not as easy as, you know, we think it is, but it's just nah. like if they would try it once in a while. I mean, he yeah. tried to bump against the shift a couple times. Yeah. And uh, A-Rod. Yeah, A-Rod. And, well, uh, A-Rod, know, was speaking, A-Rod was speaking this, this week, and he, he thinks they should ban the shift. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I think it gets a little too, uh, you know, I I don't like everybody being on the right side or everybody being on the left left side. It just, uh, it takes something away from the game. Yeah, like he said, you know, there should be two defenders on the on the left side of the second base and two on the, on the right side, and the second baseman shouldn't be playing in shallow right center, you know. And it's... I kind of look at it like if the base runners aren't allowed to run out of the baseline, then defenders shouldn't be allowed to play another position, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it just seems it's, it's not baseball. I know in, in double a this year, uh, they're, they're not going to let the fielders do that. They have, yeah. they can't play the outfield grass. They have to That's play their cool. position. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, it's one of the. Uh, I mean, if it works, teams aren't going to stop doing it. But uh, you know, it's a, it's a big change from what baseball used to be. And uh, you know, I know I, I've lost a lot of interest. Yeah, and people hate the the extra innings rule where you start a runner at second. And even today, I almost forgot about it. That that's how it is. And you know, I just I think that's one of the probably the stupidest rule they have is starting a runner at second in the 10th inning. I just, I just, I'll never get used to that one. Yeah. That, that, that's when they got a bag. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, they, they got to get rid of that rule. I, I think that's, that's the worst. I mean, yeah. you know, bad enough they can, you know, you can have five outfielders or, but you know, that <laughs> is, that, that's just, uh, that's just destroying the, you know, the game. Yeah, cause, I mean, they say, you know, they want to try to shorten the game, but he, but games are still being played basically this, the same amount of time. It's almost four hours a game. So it's, you're not really saving that much time. I mean, if you want to put a runner at second after, you know, after the 13th inning or something like that, maybe, but not, not the 10th. Well, I think the games were even longer last year. And, I mean, it's not, it's not the length of the game that gets me. It's like... It's all this, you know, manufactured action, or you know, the interviews yeah. on the field, and all the all the commercials, and all the nonsense that goes on between innings. It's like that's what drags the game on. It's all the you know the the sponsorship which they have to have because they got to make their you know their billion dollars. But uh, that's what slows the game down. Yeah, and I was talking. To this, uh, I, yesterday I put out a, a message. You know, I, I felt bad for Jacob Degrom of the Mets because he had another great game, and it just seems like every time that poor man pitches, the Mets score zero runs. And someone <laughs> replied to my message: No one cares who wins the game. You know, and I'm like, What are you talking about? And he, they're like, No one cares who pitches and wins the game. And I'm just like, I just thought to myself, What the hell's wrong with these these young kids today? I mean. They don't care who wins the game. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm invested more in baseball than than they are. But, I mean, I I just – I mean, it's unbelievable. Jacob DeGrom has 14 strikeouts. He he has three hits, and, you know, he just can't get any run support. Well, believe me, if he goes to talk contract, (laughs) the the wins and loss record mean a lot. I mean – yeah. I, I don't know how many career wins he has, Rob. I mean, he's a tremendous pitcher. And I, what does he have? Maybe seventy career wins. 
something like that. I, they put out a ridiculous stat from 2018. He's got an ERA of 2.06, and the win-loss record is ridiculous. I think he has actually has uh, the Mets have a losing record in that time span when he starts, even though his ERA is right around two. And they showed you Garrett Cole, his numbers, and he has double the amount of wins than uh, DeGrom does with the higher ERA. It's just it seems like every game DeGrom does not get any run support. I mean, literally none, zero. Yeah, it just seems like every time he pitches, the guy he's pitching against pitches great. Yeah. And the Mets just don't score. Yeah. You know, but I, I like to see, you know, pitchers get wins. Like, you know, there's that triple crown for, for pitchers, you know, wins, ERA, and, and uh, strikeouts, you know, or ERA. If, you know, they, if they, you know, lead in that category, it's basically like winning the triple crown, you know, as a hitter. And so saying you don't, you don't care who wins or loses a game, it's ridiculous. I mean, I think, you know, there's records, baseball, you know, known for their records and winning pitcher one of them. Yeah, I mean, a pitcher wants to win 20 games. And I mean, a lot of times when, when you went to, to a ball game, you wanted to see like, oh, well, look, this guy's 16 and four this year. He might win 20, 25 games. And st- you know, now, yeah. uh, oh, look, the Grom six and six and five and uh, his earn run average is 1.98. So, <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, and that's the thing. We're going to see 20-game winners are going to be infrequent. I mean, you're just not going to see them anymore, you know. People, you know, unless you're a pitcher like uh, Garrett Cole who might have a shot. But otherwise, you know, they pull pitchers before they get up to 100 pitches. Yeah, it's going to have to be, you know, you're going to have to be on a really good team. And, uh you know, they're going to have to score a lot of runs for you because most of these yeah. guys will pitch six innings. Even like a guy like uh, Cole, you know, he'll pitch six, he'll, he'll get in the seventh sometime, but you have you have to have some luck too. You know, you pitch yeah. your five innings, you maybe give up four runs, but they score seven or eight runs for you. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of other factors involved too. Yeah. Yeah, I saw, yeah, Jacob DeGrom, <laughs> he threw 100 miles per hour, I think, in his last inning. I think he touched 101. I mean, the guy's just unbelievable. Yeah, where where is it? Yeah, since 2018, he's got a 25 and 20 record with the 1.70 ERA. And he won a Cy Young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I just I I just couldn't believe it when when that person told me no one cares who wins the games. Yeah, I was like, whoa. <laughs> well, a lot of times, Robert, you know, the, they 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 follow like rotisserie or all that stuff they got now, yeah. and, and and it's like they don't cheer for a team; they cheer for a player yeah. to help them win. Their, you know, I, yeah. I don't know anything about these leagues. I mean, a, after the challenge, the Yankee game and Stratomatic, I, I don't know nothing about the, you know, <laughs> this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. I know they have the Mets and Braves coming out of the National League East, but I have a feeling the Phillies are going to be there in the end. I just have a gut feeling on that. I know we're a Yankees talk about the Yankees, but I like to. I think the Phillies might actually uh, be fighting for that division this year too. Well, I mean they got great fans there. I mean we got Didi over there and Girardi and uh, Bryce you know, Harper. Bryce Harper. Yeah, I'd like to see him. You know. Uh, I, I mean, like, I don't follow it much like I used to, but I'd like to see the Phillies get somebody who can hit be, behind Bryce Harper and see yeah. what numbers he can really put up. Yeah. And uh, this week, uh, like I said, the Yankees got eight games in 10 days, and they got three with Toronto, three with Tampa, and uh, two with Atlanta. Yeah, I know they're down here tomorrow you know, like 20 miles from me and over here in Dunedin. And, uh, you know, they, they play, they play the Rays better at the Yankee stadium and the Braves yeah. got a good team. So that could be an, uh, an interesting series. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice to, well, I think the Yankees will get better as the weather gets warmer. 
Oh yeah, they'll they'll win their games. I mean, they'll hit their yeah. home run. And, uh, you know, everything will be uh, good in Yankee Land. I, I think by the time June rolls around. <laughs> yeah, you know, and like I think I think we talked about this like a couple of weeks ago that they'll go to a six man rotation and and if, you know towards the end of April, and I think we will see Debbie, Debbie Garcia. Yeah, I mean they're gonna they're gonna need more arms and 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 you know uh, eventually uh, you know the injury you want you want me to get some injury reports Robert or? Yeah 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 I know Clark Schmidt uh, he hasn't even begun throwing yet and he's going to get another uh, you know evaluation and Severino he's throwing bullpens he's he's throwing some sliders and fastball so you know. Sometime this summer he'll be back and boy, uh his rehab in New York. Yeah. It'll be two weeks tomorrow. So, you know, he he should be coming back uh shortly. and Zach Britton, he's he's he started throwing last week. Oh, and uh and, yeah, Anduhar is taking life swings. He he'll hit off a tee this week and take some life swings, so uh you know, he'll be ready to go to Scranton when the season opens. Uh, that's good. I almost forgot about Zach Britton. I forgot that we we have him. I mean, he's a he's a great piece to have coming out of the bullpen. Yeah, he's outstanding. Yeah, I mean the Yankees. They do. They got a great bullpen. I mean, with Britton and Chapman at the end, and guys like Michael King and the Wiza, um, and even Clark Schmidt if he if he's healthy. You know, you could see him in the mix at some point. But they they got a nice bullpen. It's uh it's gonna be. The starting pitching that has the most question marks, I think. Yeah, and I, I think Robert, I think the thing is, they'll get Britain back. I don't know, sometime around June. Yeah. So and Severino, will be, Severino will be back at, at uh, sometime after the All Star break too, right? Yeah, that's what they were talking midsummer. Yeah, and that'd be interesting to see how he looks. He hasn't pitched in a while either, a couple of years really. Yeah, he's 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 missed a lot of time. They'll probably do the, what they did when he come back the last time. You know, he'll throw out of the bullpen. Yeah, Yankees were uh, were smart giving him uh, that four year, forty million dollar contract. I think he's still got two years left on it, right? After this year. Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, when they gave him the contract. He was down here in spring training. And he was warming up in the bullpen. And I was standing there taking some pictures, and he threw like seven or eight pitches, <laughs> and you know that was it. So. Yeah, because I mean, God, I mean, you figure you got him in the mix. I mean, they got they'll have about a good six, seven, eight starters by the end of the year. Well, I think they're going to need uh, each and every one. Yeah, of them. yeah, yeah. You know, but um, Corey Kluber is a guy. You know, I, I I didn't realize. I thought he threw a lot harder than than he did. He's only topping out at like eighty nine to ninety two on his fastball. Yeah, I mean th- that that's a concern. I mean, if if the pitches are moving and he's on, he's you know he's tough to hit, but he's got to be fine with these pitches because you know you're not going to fool anybody throwing a. Uh, 89, 90 miles an hour. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out. But, uh, you know, it's a big question mark. A lot of these guys have been hurt. So, yeah. And, and, we'll and, that, and the guy they got from Pittsburgh, Talian, um, he looked good in, in his first start. I think he only went four and two thirds, but he looked good. But I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of his delivery. He has like a, a a uh, long delivery with his arm. I mean, it's like he reaches back far with his with his throwing arm and throws it. I could see why he he suffered two injuries to his throwing arm. Yeah, that puts a lot of strain on he, on his arm. I, I think you know, uh, for his for his first four, five, six starts, you, you know, we're only going to see him throw maybe four innings, five innings at the most, because uh, you know he's coming back from a lot of injuries, so. You know, that's something yeah. else up in the air. You know, he did he did look pretty good, but yeah, I mean Kluber, him and and Herman, you know, those they're gonna need those guys to pitch well, you know, as you know, in the starting rotation. They're they're gonna be key to the Yankees' success this year, I think. 
Yeah, we got we got to hope these kids come up for the minors too, and uh, mm-hmm. you know. Robert and yeah, hello. Yeah, I lose you for a second. Um, yeah, that's a good start. yeah. Uh, but uh, I think the only lefty they have in their bullpen is Lucas. L- 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 how do you pronounce his last name? Lutej or Lutich? Yeah, he, he, left- that's a great story. He, he's been up and down for a long. I think the last time he pitched in the majors was a couple of years ago, and he's uh, so that's a good got the good story. Him making the making the team, but, uh, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't really know who they got in the minors who's a lefty right now, but, you know, I'm sure they can pick somebody up. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, during, during spring training that, that Lucas fellow, he, he was a strikeout machine and he's looked good when he's, he's, he's come in this year. He's gotten, he's gotten in a, you know, a little trouble, but he's, it seems to be he gets in trouble when he first comes in right away, and then he settles down and he and he's solid. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, it, it's a great story, and hopefully he can keep it up. And uh, you know, we'll see how everything uh, comes along. And uh, oh, Robert, you want to talk about uh, Tor- Torres? Oh yeah, Glaber Torres. I mean, uh, it's crazy how the fans can turn on you so quick. I, I'm Yankee fans the last several days they want to trade Glaber Torres away and go after that guy Trevor Trevor Story from uh, Colorado and like I'll tell people you know he's a free agent after this season you'll you're trading away a you want to trade away a guy the club has team control of until 2024 but it just seems a lot of people do not like Glaber Torres at shortstop well I mean he, he struggled he struggled defensively but he felt how many games he played there um, last, yeah, last year was his first full season. If you can't really call it a full season, but it was his first full time action at short shortstop last year. I mean, he's not going anywhere, Robert. They're they're not nah, they're not nah. going to play him. I mean, they're they're not going to make any knee jerk reactions. I mean, this is something George would do. Yeah, you know, yeah, George was uh, trading for uh, some veteran shortstop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because like uh, the story is a free agent after this year, but so is Corey Corey Seager of the Dodgers, and I rather go after a guy like him who's a left-handed hitter. You know, the Yankees need to to start acquiring some left-handed hitters for that lineup. I mean, they got a short porch and right. You'd like to have a couple of lefties that can hit the ball out of the park. Yeah, I mean that that's a possibility. And Torres could go back to second base, but second, uh, yeah. You know, you know, right now, I mean, they're going to use Ur- Ursala as a uh, the backup shortstop, and you know, you have Tyler Wade in the minors. He'll he'll be up and down all season. So, uh, you know, he, I know he's struggling, Torres, but you you, get, you can't panic. You got to give the kid a, a chance to adjust uh, defensively. And I know, I think, you know, it's getting to his head a little bit because he's not anywhere near the hitter he was. No, I, I, yeah, a couple seasons ago, I mean, when he when he's looking to drive the ball through through the zone and just looking to, you know, keep a level level swing, he can drive the ball to all parts of the field. But when he starts trying to to make up for you know a defensive mishap, the inning before you could tell he's swinging for the fences. And even right now, it's like he, he's going up to the plate without a plan of attack or or anything like that. He's just he's going up there not knowing what he's looking for. He's just, it seems like he's, he's lost at the plate a little bit and he's starting to try to swing for the fences to make up for it. Yeah. I, I mean, Robert, off the top of my head, do the Yankees have like any, uh, like veterans, you know, who's been in the league a while. I mean, Jay Bruce has been around a while, but you know, he's, he's new to the team, but you know, Say you had somebody like you know when A Rod was with the Yankees, he could talk to some of these young guys. Yeah. And, you know, well, this pitcher is going to throw this, and you should look for this pitch. I mean, you know, do the Yankees have any veteran presence that uh, you know can help some of these young kids? Yeah, that was the the big thing. I know Derek Jeter was a captain, but it was, it was Alex Rodriguez who would take all the young players under his wing, and some of them would say the best advice they ever got was from Alex Rodriguez when it came to hitting. You know, and 
Yeah, they really haven't had a guy like that since him that, you know, can help and take these young guys under their wing. Yeah, I, I know in the spring training, you know, you'd see A-Rod, you know, like working with, with Cano and Melky Cabrero. And, you know, I used to talk to some of the players who, minor leaguers, when he was over to, when A-Rod was over to Himes down here rehabbing, they said you know, yeah. he would talk to the younger players all the time. Yeah, even Sanchez. He, he, he helped Gary Sanchez his rookie year. And even in going into the second year, they would have conversations and, and meet for lunch occasionally. Yeah, I mean, if you want to learn anything about baseball, A. Rod's the one to talk to because, uh, yeah. you know, the the man, the, the he's uh, he, he's one of the smartest baseball people around. Yeah, and apparently, A. Rod and a business partner are going to buy uh, the Milwaukee or the Minnesota Timberwolves of the NBA. Yeah, I've seen that. So yeah, uh, yeah, that, I saw that, the headline. <laughs> Yeah, that that'll that'll be interesting, you know. Uh, I don't know. I think that he was. He, they're gonna they're gonna buy the team, and then in two years, they're gonna be able. You know, they're gonna take over everything. I think yeah. they're gonna keep the GM for a couple of years just to, you know, give them the inside and outs of uh, basketball. But uh, you know, good for a Rod. You know, it's yeah, it's, it's good to see him in the, you know, in the pro sports again. Yeah, I mean, I would have liked to have seen him been a, an owner of a baseball team, but you know, he's he's going to be a you know an owner of a sports team nonetheless. Yeah, and I think eventually, you know, uh, you know, we'll we'll see him in the major leagues in some capacity as an owner, or, or you know, somewhere along those lines. Yeah. Well, so far through the first nine games, we're, we're four and five, and next week. When we talk, we'll we'll have at least six more, seven more games under our belt. Yeah, hopefully, you know, if, if we get a little long in the season, we get some more info, and uh, you know, we'll we'll have a yeah. little bit more to talk about. But you know, with the Yankees, we always find something to talk about. Yeah, and it just seems every year they seem to struggle with runners in scoring position, and you know, if, if after nine games is any any indication of what this year is going to be like, it's going to be more of the same you know they're either going to win yeah. games easily or they're going to struggle yeah that's that's what it is with power teams once you fall in love with the home run it's uh you know it's it's hard to you know uh go shorten your swing and go to right field because you want to hit the ball 450 feet so yeah. i don't think it's going to change <laughs> nah no nah. So maybe next week we could try to do it on a Friday. I know I, ha- I had to bump it back a couple of days, but we'll try to do it next Friday. Yeah, that, that's fine, Robert. You know, wh- wh- whatever is good for you. Okay. So uh, all the listeners out there, we'll, we'll, we'll see you next Friday. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.